integrals is an application of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And the fundamental theorem of calculus is an application of the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem does a lot of heavy lifting in math theory. And the reason is because it gives us a relationship between the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change. But it's important on a level beyond just the technical level where we push the symbols around on a page. It's important because the basic assumption that a function is differentiable is really a way of saying that it's okay to approximate this function using uh, the tangent line. The average rate of change of a function over a small interval represents the slope of the secant line. That's this line here in red. I don't like this red color. Try again, a little bit darker. That's the slope of the straight line that connects the endpoints. At some place, the slope of the tangent line must be the same as the slope of the secant line. And I'm going to convince you of that here. I'm going to draw the parallel line to the secant line. And let's see if I can move it around without changing its angle and find a place that it's tangent. Boop, there it is right there. X star. It's supposed to be like a special X. This must happen. It, it's like looking at the picture, it's so obviously true. Uh, if you draw a smooth curve, there's got to be this parallel tangent line and secant line phenomenon. It must happen. I'm going to do a little algebra uh, and move this x2 minus x1 over to the other side. And uh, uh, I'm also going to call it delta x. It's so hard to draw these little stars. Why did they choose this symbol? Phew. Um, this graph that I've drawn here, this is supposed to be the graph of the derivative. You might call this the net change theorem. There's a lot of different ways to write this. If y equals f of x, then dy dx equals f prime of x or um, dy equals f prime of x dx. So this left-hand side could also look like the integral of uh, uh, d dx of y dx, right? Um, or it could just look like the integral of dy. But the point is, when you look at the left-hand side of this equation, what you're supposed to see is essentially a differential. So I'm going to partition this interval into a bunch of little pieces, all called x sub n. And then the norm of this partition is just going to be the size of the change in x. Um, and then x0 is going to be a, and b is going to be x sub n. Uh, so right before b is going to be x sub n minus 1, 1 less than x sub n. Oops, I forgot the limit. Oh, I forgot the limit. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. All right, so I've just written down the definition in terms of Riemann sums of uh, this integral of the derivative on the left-hand side. Oh, man, you should really, it should really start to look like an application of the mean value theorem. You can see I really just have, oh, I forgot this part, too. I'm an idiot. God then you choose a point and the the beauty of of Riemann integration is that you're allowed to choose any point that's in one of these little sub intervals uh, and plug that into the function in this case f prime uh, in order to calculate the height of a little rectangle that was a bit of a chore but i have written the Riemann sums definition of uh, this integral on the left-hand side of the equation. And now it's really got to be clear that this is an application of the mean value theorem because this is just exactly the expression that we had as a result of the mean value theorem right here on the inside. So it's hard to see exactly what's going on when everything is hidden behind all this dense math notation. Um, but I'm, I'm going to have a telescoping sum. Um, so I, I chose all of the x stars, all of the, the points 
uh, to measure the area under the uh, derivative of the function according to the mean value theorem. And that let me replace this expression um, with the difference in, uh, in two values of the function. So we're really using exactly the concept of differentiability here because I am replacing essentially some tangent line approximation with the values of the function. So if in the n equals 5 case, we're still going to have the limit, and this is as the size of the partition goes to 0. I'm sorry, I'm so lazy. Um, so if there was just 5 of the, that 5 may be too much. Let's do 3. There's 3 of these. <laughs> So uh, it would go up to n equals 3. So this will be x3 minus f of uh, 1 less than 3. So that'll be x2. Now we've done n equals 3. Now I'm going to have to do n equals 2. And you can see these middle terms are always going to cancel. Even with just 3, it's kind of long. That's why we have sigma notation. So this is the n equals 3 term. And this is the n equals 2 term. So next will be the n equals 1 term. So this will be f of x1 minus f of x0. This is the n equals 1 term. Um, and so all, all, the, all the middle ones are going to cancel, right? f of x2, f of x2, f of x1, f of x1. They all just cancel. I'm going to forget to write limit every time. Am I, am I a Calc 1 student? And then xn is b and x0 is a. So this is always just f of b minus f of a. Because in the Riemann sums definition, I'm allowed to choose uh, any point in the subinterval. So I always just use the mean value theorem. So the fundamental theorem is really just an application of uh, the mean value theorem. I've also seen the fundamental theorem of line integrals called the gradient theorem. Um, and I've also seen this version of the fundamental theorem of calculus called the net change theorem. OK, let's just look at the setup of this. Uh, previously, what we were doing was uh, f prime of x. Um, was equal to some kind of derivative of the function. Uh, and now we're going to have some vector valued function is going to be the gradient of a function of multiple variables. So in our metaphor, um, the diff derivative operator is going to become the gradient and um, the uh, derivative of the function is going to be replaced by uh, this vector value function. Just to jump back to uh, motion and uh, motion in space and vector valued functions. So let's let R be a parameterization. I just want to kind of unpack these symbols on the left hand side. If R is the position, then uh, dr dt is the velocity and the unit tangent vector is a v over magnitude v and ds is uh, the magnitude of v times dt. So that means this piece right here, tds, uh, that's going to be v over magnitude v, that's, that's t, and then ds will be magnitude v dt and those magnitude v's will cancel and I'll just have uh, v dt, um, but you see if I move this v or this dt over to the other side, then this would just be dr. So uh, sometimes to compress these symbols on the left-hand side, uh, they'll trade out tds. They'll just write that as dr. It's the same thing. And now it really looks like the fundamental theorem of calculus. Remember, this was... Uh, some kind of differential operation applied to the function uh, multiplied by some uh, differential amount is giving me the values at the endpoint. Um, so it really matches perfectly 
uh, and the, uh, the derivative operation is replaced by the gradient operation. So this is fantastic. Um, from the point of view of making math problems easier, because um, what this means is if you're trying to calculate the line integral of a vector valued function, um, then all you have to do is uh, try to find some scalar valued function uh, where your vector valued function is the gradient of that scalar valued function, and then you can just plug in the endpoints. But that's not what this guy's freaking out about. Um, there's really a very powerful uh, part of this that isn't really explicitly mentioned. It's, it's just if you think about it, there's, there's something extra going on here. Um, the left side of this equation is the line integral uh, of a vector valued function along a curve. And we've done a bunch of examples where this does depend on the path. Uh, but the right-hand side of this equation is just plugging in the endpoints. It only depends on the starting point and the ending point of the, of the particle. So since these two things are equal and the, the right-hand side doesn't depend on the path that you take, then the left-hand side doesn't depend on the path that you take either. So that, that is just fantastic. And actually, this really matches with the physical interpretation of what it means um, for uh, the vector valued function that you're talking about to be the gradient of some scalar valued function. Um, so let's look at the uh, formulation of this from a physical point of view um, so that we can try to understand uh, what, the, uh, what the vector valued function represents in this instance and what the uh, what the scalar valued function that you take the gradient of represents.